We come to Holy Mass this morning on this eighth Sunday of Ordinary Time, the final Sunday before the start of Lent. Holy Mass is offered this morning for the intentions of, or for the repose of the soul of Michael Toomey, who died recently. We keep very much in our prayers, of course, this morning, all those who are suffering from the consequences of violence and war in the Ukraine. And I welcome very warmly to the Mass today the boys of the Campion Schola Cantorum who provide the music for today's Holy Mass. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and to bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful aid, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. In a shaken sieve, the rubbish is left behind. So too, the defects of a man appear in his talk. The kiln tests the work of the potter. The test of a man is in his conversation. The orchard where the tree grows is judged on the quality of its fruit. Similarly, a man's words betray what he feels. Do not praise a man before he has spoken, since this is the test of men. The word of the Lord. Thanks. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When this perishable nature has put on imperishability, and when this mortal nature has put on immortality, then the words of Scripture will come true. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Now the sting of death is sin, and sin gets its power from the law. So let us thank God for giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Never give in then, my dear brothers. Never admit defeat. Keep on working at the Lord's work always, knowing that in the Lord you cannot be labouring in vain. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told a parable to his disciples. Can one blind man guide another? Surely both will fall into a pit. The disciple is not superior to his teacher. The fully trained disciple will always be like his teacher. Why do you observe the splinter in your brother's eye and never notice the plank in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take the splinter that is in your eye when you cannot see the plank in your own. Hypocrite, take the plank out of your own eye first and then you will see clearly enough to take out the splinter that is in your brother's eye. There is no sound tree that produces rotten fruit, nor again a rotten tree that produces sound fruit. For every tree can be told by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorns, nor gather grapes from brambles. A good man draws what is good from the store of goodness in his heart. A bad man draws what is bad from the store of badness. For a man's words flow out of what fills his heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, for at last, at least the last two years, most of us have been receiving our COVID jabs dutifully and mindful of the importance of our well-being and the good of others. But last week, the NHS announced another soon-to-be-available injection which can counteract weight loss and weight gain. The drug works by hijacking the body's appetite regulating system, leading to reduced hunger, and calorie intake. For the first time, people can achieve through drugs what was only possible through weight loss surgery, or so the pharmaceutical companies say. Not wishing to undermine the important research and funding that's gone into developing an obesity jab, the church has developed her own therapy from ancient times, which is called penance, fasting and abstinence. And we know the discipline of such practices have existed since the earliest pages of the Bible, and which are performed not just for reasons of bodily health and vanity, but as signs of our love and repentance towards Almighty God. Now, in the ancient calendar of the church, the calendar that was in use up until about 1970, this particular Sunday is known as Quinquagesima, which means 50 days from Easter. So this is the final Sunday before the start of Lent. Ash Wednesday is only three days away. So it's a good time to make sure that we are Lent ready because Lent is imminent and we should be making our plans for Lent right now. St Paul, in the second reading of the Mass today, speaks about the inevitability of dying so that the victory of Christ may be manifest. Throughout our lives, we go through this ritual of dying and rising. Each day when we fall asleep and we pull the covers over us, 
We do so in the hope that we will wake again at dawn. So each day for us is a kind of rehearsal for our own death and rising to life. And the church herself goes through this drama in her liturgy every year between Lent and Easter. Lent is the season when we go through this dying to self so that Christ may be seen more clearly and alive in each one of us. In his Lenten message, Pope Francis asks us to take some words of St. Paul to the Galatians. Let us not grow tired of doing good, for in due time we shall reap our harvest if we do not give up. And then he connects those words to the traditional Lenten practices of prayer, fasting and almsgiving. He says, let us not grow tired of praying, realising that we need God and others. And he goes on, let us not grow tired of uprooting evil from our lives, embracing fasting in order to fortify our spirit for the battle against sin, especially through the sacrament of confession and by fighting against concupiscence. And let us not grow tired of doing good in active charity towards our neighbour, giving joyfully and generously to others, especially those in most need. Now, St. Augustine, who knew only too well his own negative impulses, defined those feelings within himself as twisted and knotted tangledness. And he writes, I will certainly impose privation on myself, but always in order that God will forgive me and that I may be pleasing in his eyes and that I may joy, enjoy his delightfulness. Denying ourselves stuff, food, which nourishes our body, all of these denials nurture within us that interior disposition to listen to Christ and to be fed by his saving word. Through fasting and praying, we allow him to come and satisfy that deepest hunger that we have, that we experience in our being, that hunger and thirst for God. So whatever we decide for our lives this Lent, the objective, the essence, is the same for all of us. It is to make our Christianity lived as a relationship with Jesus and not just to see our faith, our religion, as some kind of nice ideology. We're not just spiritual people. We're called to enter into that relationship with a person, with what that person did, with what he taught. And that's why all of us this Lent have to rediscover the richness of what is contained within that person of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Undergoing therapies, taking pills, being jabbed for the sake of bodily health and vanity is good. But it's short term and it is short sighted. Because as Christians, we don't live by short sight, we live by the long view. We're long sighted because we're made not for this earth, we're made for eternal life. And Lent serves to remind us of how we should be living every day, not just these 40 short days ahead of us. Because in the blink of an eye, we know anything and everything can change. None of us can say, okay. I'll begin tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll start being better. Tomorrow I'll start being a holier person, a kinder person. It may not arrive. So repentance and conversion begins always now, because we may not have another chance. And it is Mary who will accompany us as always, with her mother's love as we make this pilgrimage towards Easter again. She was the first witness of the resurrection. Why? Because she stood faithfully beside the cross. Because of this, she can strengthen us 
in our witness to the world by our prayer, fasting and charity, witnessing to that which is most important. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. I believe in one God, Father, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Christ is the beloved Son of God, who calls us to conversion in his name. Let us bring now our prayers before the Father. For all of the church, as we approach Lent, that it may be for us a time of purification and renewal. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We pray for the people of Ukraine that God may bring peace to that region and turn the hearts of the people of violence to reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. For engaged couples preparing for the sacrament of marriage in our parish and deanery, may they be inspired with a deep understanding of its challenges, joys and graces. Lord, in your mercy. For those who have died recently, Mary Rigdon. Also for the dead whose anniversaries occur about this time, may their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us turn in confidence to Blessed Mary, refuge of sinners. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In silence, let us tell God, our Father, of any special needs. Lord, with confidence we ask your help. May we know your mercy and love in our lives as we make our prayers through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name, and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant us as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery he accomplished the marvellous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to be worthy to be called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people fit for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim our death for God and for resurrection until Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. One that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edmund Campion, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Mm. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We show each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in this present age, you may make us partakers of eternal life through Christ our Lord. So this Wednesday is the start of Lent, a day of fasting and abstinence. Masses on Ash Wednesday are at 9.30 a.m. with the children of Our Lady of Lourdes Primary School participating, 12 noon and 8 p.m. Pope Francis has said this week, I invite everyone to make this coming Ash Wednesday a day of fasting for peace. Let believers dedicate themselves intensely to prayer and fasting, and may the Queen of Peace preserve the world from the madness of war. Friday is the first Friday of the month, and there's exposition and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament from after midday Mass until the Holy Hour at 7 o'clock on Friday evening. And of course we do thank the boys of the Schola Cantorum of the Campion School for coming to the parish today to raise our moods at the start of Lent, but also of course and most importantly to enhance the dignity of the sacred liturgy, to direct our minds and hearts to God in this great act of sacrifice and praise which is the Holy Mass and may you continue doing this for many more years and giving glory to God in this way through the beauty of song in the sacred liturgy. Thank you so much indeed, the headmaster, head of music, and all those who accompany the boys here as well here today. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <laughs>